So the ancients have never seen anything like this. They just saw it take, take Mars to the cleaner, so to speak. And now here it comes. It's probably changed its orbit a bit also. Now, uh, very likely, its orbit could cross that of Earth. In other words, Earth is, uh, would be in a nice circular orbit around the Sun, and the orbit of Venus would cross over that of Earth. So here we have scenario number two, bound to uh, have an encounter, not a direct collision necessarily, but a, a major gravitational encounter where orbits would change, where uh, the on Earth especially we would have a pole shift and on and on. Uh, in the case, okay, so now let's follow Venus in from where it was at Mars because this is very important. Let's go around for the first orbit. Uh, it's farther out than Earth, and so eventually Earth and the comet are going to have an encounter where Earth is going to move through the nose sunward spike, the electron beam coming out from the sun towards Venus. Earth is going to move through that. So the astrologers, they're watching and for the inferior or the uh, uh, conjunction of uh, Venus and Earth, in other words, they're in direct alignment with the Sun, but Venus out farther, all of a sudden Earth is going to experience some hellacious weather, some really bad weather. And the astrologers have to say, whoa, wait a minute, uh, we have this new object, we just saw it clean out Mars, now we are coming into conjunctions with this and having tremendous weather events. Hmm, what's, what's with that? You know, you can just imagine them wondering what power this comet has in, over, the, uh, over the Earth. And so that's why Quetzalcoatl, the uh, plume serpent god of the Mayan mythology and also the Incas and later the Aztecs picked it up also, but that's why the comet represented by Quetzalcoatl was one of the main deities and it was related to the reconstruction of Earth, wind, rain, and uh, basically death of the human race. And so why would they think that about Venus? Venus is just a little planet sitting between us and the Sun, according to NASA. Uh, it has uh, would have no bearing on our weather or anything else, but when you understand that Venus back then, a long time ago, was meandering through the solar system, was a discharge of the solar capacitor, and in fact uh, was uh, you know a very energetic uh, uh, entity electrically over a very large span of space, I always say that the comets are very active electrically. Now, Let's just, uh, I know people are a little confused about this idea of the discharge comet model, so let's look at the, the scale of these things. Here we have the nucleus of the comet, probably bigger than the, or, uh, than the planet Mars, probably a little bit smaller than Earth, and so we have this object, but you can't see the object because it's bound up in the comet coma, the material coming in from the outer part of the solar system, and um, the uh, 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 the um, as I said, the material building up in Venus. But every time we have an inferior conjunction, now, gee, all of a sudden Earth has severe weather. In other words, Earth is between Venus and the Sun, and so uh, astrologers are certainly going to pick up on that. They're going to go, well, it did it again. And it did it again. Okay, here, there, we're going to see if the next time we come around the sun, as we catch up to Venus in its orbit, it's farther out than, than Earth in its orbit uh, from the sun. We're going to see what happens in there again. Hmm, severe weather. As Venus winds its way in towards Earth in its orbit, the tail drag of Venus slowing it down, dropping its orbit, changing its orbit, the, um, as this happens, Every time Earth comes between the Sun and Venus, severe weather. So they're very tuned to this now. This is a very important concept that all of a sudden the Earthlings are going, this baby's on its way, it's going to take a long time to get here, 
but it's not going to be good. And when uh, when this uh, thing comes, they've already seen it draw the atmosphere off Mars, and so I think people by then were getting a little bit worried because they really didn't know what the orbit of this lawless comet would hold because it's been changing. It hasn't been static, and uh, by now also, this big comet has drained the solar capacitor. Let's talk about a modern pheno phenomenon called Hilbop, that a big comet, no well, medium-sized comet, that passed through the solar system in the mid-1990s and uh, pumped up the sun's energy, gave us a double peak sun um, maximum around the year 2000, which extended it out to about the year 2002, and all of a sudden dropped down and now we're in this bizarre, long, record-breaking solar minimum. And so what's going to happen now? Is the, uh, so, is the solar cycle going to accelerate? Is it going to become much larger? Are we going to have a drought? Or is it going to stay down where it is? Are we going to have, a, say, a 200-year drought in very cool weather? And so we don't really know. Uh, but... Uh, the nature's conditions in the solar system are huge and powerful. And we are just on the surface of the Earth here. We're just kind of subject to whatever happens to us. That's one of the uh, very hmm, kind of, I guess, demeaning things of being on Earth. It's, I, I always get a kick out of people driving around in their SUVs with their credit cards and doing all of their stuff for sporting, and that's all good. But just think of all of the energy, the time and energy we've wasted with all of these pursuits, uh, wars, what have you, military, ships, things like that. But we have no ability to go into space and get away from one of these major disasters. Uh, so at any rate, now every year the ancients are clocking this like clockwork. They're tracking Venus, trying to make heads or tails out of its orbit. And then, all of a sudden, the first major Earth encounter where the large object that's uh, nestled into the comet, the nucleus of the large comet Venus, and Earth nearly collide, don't collide directly, but they encounter each other for the very first time. And what seems to be the case, we know from Mayan mythology that this, these two encounters occurred at a 54-year interval, and um, at a 54-year interval, and uh, so the first encounter seemed to be a bit more gentle. Uh, didn't do as much damage. Who knows what things went down at that time? It's hard to say exactly. We don't have a real good record of that, but it's pretty clear that after another 54 years, which would have maybe been about, oh, let's see, maybe three, four orbits of Venus and Earth, all of a sudden they encounter each other again. And this time it was bad. This is the one where Earth really took a, a beating. And now it's interesting to see that Noah started to build an ark. It was stated that God told him to build an ark and how big it was and to put two of every animal he could find in the ark. And so Noah's out there in the middle of the desert building this big ark and everybody's laughing at him. Hey Noah, what you doing building a ship out here? This is, you know, old crazy old man Noah. You know, and then one day he uh, starts gathering the animals up like he was told, putting them in the ark. And... Um, uh, uh, you know, closes the door and sits there <laughs> with his family and all of a sudden it starts to rain and it starts to rain and it starts to really rain then it starts to really, really rain then it starts to really, 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 really rain and it keeps doing this for 40 days and 40 nights and as far as Noah is concerned uh, you have the hurricanes going on the tremendous weather all of the earth changes going on that occur when a large comet uh, passes close to earth. And as I said, I've talked about these topics before, but the point is, um, I'm not going to go into all of those earth changes details, but it, um, uh, um, the um, 
sorry, I just had a small distraction here. But uh, the, you know, the event there was horrendous. We know from the ancients that there was oil, the burning naphtha, and the rocks coming in to the, uh, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the um, meteor stream, along with the comet, the uh, rain of fire and brimstone, the tremendous flood that was worldwide. And then as the water receded, as I talked about last week, the water receded and uh, rose, the oceans rose about 200 feet, probably wiping out all major cities in the world of that time. Now they're sitting out on the edge of the continental shelves. But uh, now, so the, what happened to the population? Well, they were devastated, of course, and the Colburn is really clear about that, that it talks about the people coming out of caves, uh, wandering around crazed at the tremendous destruction that had occurred and um, probably most of them deaf from the tremendous sound that occurred, the trumpeting as the electrical discharges came by, you know, the Moses event. Uh, all of these things happening on earth. And uh, it, there again, it's hard to say which thing happened uh, during which encounter. But it's very specific, according to the Mayans, that this happened with a 54-year difference. And then Venus the Comet, by the way, Earth, remember when Venus pulled the atmosphere off of Mars and the oceans off of Mars, it was because Venus, the Comet Nucleus, had a larger surface gravity. The object in there was larger than Mars when it came by Earth. Earth was larger, so we pulled in from the comet. We had a tremendous pollution event. And now Venus, the comet, starts pulling away from Earth in its new near-circular orbit as it starts to wind in towards the... Uh, uh, it starts to spiral inwards. And that's one of the effects of the tail drag of the large comet. It, um, it drags on the comet as the comet moves around the sun and uh, uh, causes its orbit to spiral in towards the sun. And so the, the whole idea is that um, we, uh, uh, the Venus now is working its way in to ultimately have a near circular orbit as a planet. As that happens, the tail activity dies down and so eventually it becomes the planet Venus. And that's why the Mayan legend talks about the heart of Quetzalcoatl eventually becoming the planet Venus, because that's what they saw. The, the huge comet finally went away and left the residue, which is the planet Venus. But before that, after the second in Earth encounter, of course, Earth is devastated, and as the civilizations come uh, crawling out of the mud, so to speak, the few remaining people that survived, they were intelligent people. They brought with them calendars. They understood uh, ge geography. They understood uh, how the calendars worked. And, the, and they noticed something incredible, that the calendars had changed. And they couldn't keep up with the changes of the calendars. Things were changing. And so they finally had to come up with a new calendar, and this is where Velikovsky comes in. He was studying calendars, not astronomy, and he just happened to come across this Venus event with, that was referenced every place throughout history as these civilizations crawled out of the muck and started reporting and writing down and, and recording for posterity what had happened to them. So at any rate, now we have Venus the comet moving around, and now every time Earth encounters the comet tail, we get another shot of this rain activity, glaciation, cold. So for a long time, and frankly, it's quite amazing that anybody on Earth lived through any of this at all. Frankly, it's quite amazing that anybody on Earth lived through any of this at all. Frankly, it's quite amazing that anybody on Earth lived through any of this at all. Frankly, it's quite amazing that anybody on Earth lived through any of this at all. Frankly, it's quite amazing that anybody on Earth lived through any of this at all. 